Hey BJJ Library, here is Saul with uh, one of my good longtime friends, great champ, André Galvão. We had this visit here, special moment, coming here to the headquarters in San Diego and talk about the thing that we love the most, Jiu-Jitsu and also career, family and everything that comes together with that. So André, my great pleasure to be here. Thank you, my son. Oh, that's awesome. So André, first thing everybody want to know, how old were you when you started Jiu-Jitsu? Which city in Brazil you come from? Mm -hmm. And uh, how was the the first day going to Jiu-Jitsu? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I born in São Sebastião, uh, as a coast of São Paulo, as a, a big beach there, like with the name uh, uh, Maresias. Maresias. You know? uh, born like in the area. How how big is the city? Uh, it's it's very small. No, it's like uh, maybe eighty thousand like 100,000 people in the city. And I born there, but uh, like my daddy has a job and uh, we always need to like follow him when he like changed like the spots to, to work. And then I grew up in the Valle do Paraíba. It's, uh, it's like around like uh, San José dos Campos, Taubaté, like that area, you know? And uh, I moved, you know, to, to the Valle do Paraíba. And then there I, I start training judo and actually I got my first judo gi with uh, Claudio Calazans Sr. Claudio Calazans uh, uh, Jr.'s daddy. You know, Great like, family of exactly, judo, very yeah. respectful. Yeah, so they have a, a very uh, big dojo in, in San Jose, dos Campos. And then uh, he gave me a... I used to hang out with, with uh, Junior, with uh, Juninho, when I was like little, like Calazans Jr. I was like uh, 11 years old, 12 years old. And then at uh, that time, like he gave me the first gi, you know, and uh, and the gi was uh, like you know that like blank gi, you know, <laughs> and like little stinky, you know. So I I got that gi, and then I start training judo. He gave me a free train for all my family. I have like six six uh, uh, three brothers and and three sisters. So how many six of people. them involved in jiu-jitsu? Uh, my two brothers. Um, right. I have two brothers. They train jiu-jitsu. One in Barcelona. And one is in San Jose dos Campos, like teaching Jiu Jitsu right there. Uh, both are black belts right now. And then I start training Judo, you know, in 2000, no, not 2000, like in 1996, 1995. And then uh, I start training, 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 training. And uh, they have like a program, a Jiu Jitsu program at the gym, like twice a week. And I start training Jiu Jitsu as well. And who, then I, who was your, your teacher at that time? At that time, it was a guy with the name is Robson. Uh, Robson, you know, and uh, he was a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Oh. Uh, uh, he, he traveled, like, I don't remember the school, like, the name is Tercero Milenio, like, I don't remember. And They uh, still exist until now? I think so, yeah. yeah. He's from uh, Bairro do Limão in Sao Paulo. And I, I remember he used to, like, go to San José just to teach jiu-jitsu for us. And then, like, when I when I... I started learning jiu-jitsu, you know, like I train jiu-jitsu once a week, twice a week, and I started liking jiu-jitsu more than, than judo. And so then, how like, old were you at the time? Nah, I was like 13, 14 years old. 14. You know? Yeah. And then my, my, my oldest brother, he used to train jiu-jitsu in a jiu-jitsu academy, like a full time. And he invited me to go there and train jiu-jitsu with him. Like, let's go there, let's go there, let's check it out. And then I went to the place, uh, which was with my, my, I call him like my first instructor, Luis Carlos Dagimar. And the, the, his, his uh, nickname is Careca. Careca. He's under Osvaldo Alves. And uh, I start training there. And then uh, every day, like I, he gave me a free train, you know? And I start training Judo in Calazans Academy and Jiu Jitsu there every single day. Right after Judo, I take my bike, ride my bike to the Jiu Jitsu Academy. It was like a few blocks like, from each other, you know, and then I started training like that, and then I started like liking more jiu-jitsu than judo, and you know? I started to have better ju uh, better results in jiu-jitsu than judo, and then I decided to take jiu-jitsu as my career, you know, and since I'm a white belt, I start training every single day, uh, morning, afternoon, and night, morning, afternoon. I, I used to like open the gym and lock the gym. My coach gave me the key, and I used to like clean up the gym, you know, all day and um, help him to teach a private lesson, you know, and I stay with him like every single day, like, uh, you know, from Sunday to Sunday, it was crazy. And, you know, I started winning tournaments in six months, I got my blue belt and then I stay in blue belt for two years and I won 
I won first world title as a blue belt, you know, and the first year as a blue belt, I lost the finals of the words, you know. I remember like which year was that? 2000, 2001. You fought the one? finals. Oh, uh, when I <laughs> fought Margarita. <laughs> exactly. You were blue belt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched <laughs> the fight. I watched the fight there. That was awesome. I got the second place. Who beat words. you? Is this two? Is this yes, two in the yes, yes, guy? yes, 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 yes. Uh, this guy, he fights a Bellator right now. His name is René Nazaré. René Nazaré. He's Rene from Nova, Nova Union. Oh, okay. He fights Bellator MMA. He's very tough, you know, and uh, he beat me in the finals. Uh, I was winning by a lot of advantage, and then he did a kataguru on me, and then he took me down, and he won by two points. At this time, you still training? Careca. É careca. Exactly. And then, and then I move, and then I, and the second year, my 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 first instructor, like he realized I, I I I I was winning everything, you know, in my state, in São Paulo state, like São Paulo state tournament. I used to travel to Rio to compete in Rio, in Niterói, the Linge, you know. Uh, I used to like fight all these tournaments uh, all over and I have a good sponsor uh, my sponsor is Vinac Consorts so he used to pay me everything you know every every tournament you know and then I started to compete 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 and my coach say man it's time for you to move on so nobody here from the town wants to train and uh, you know? a really spe a great thing is that uh, your coach had the vision yeah your sensei had the vision exactly. because in Jiu Jitsu what people don't understand we have our cycles. Exactly. It's not that we are a bad person, yeah. that we betray this, that exactly. is this. Is that the best cycle? It's end. Mm -hmm. So it's now it's time for a different one. So yeah. I see like that. Yeah. And it's clear that your, your teacher said, man, you need to grow. Exactly. Yeah, and I still... Just already, I'll grow exactly. here, let's do something. Exactly. So what was the move? Yeah, because like uh, I was from the small town and it doesn't have like many practitioner in the, in the, in the you class. You were still a blue belt? I was a blue belt, yeah. Blue belt. Blue belt. And then I had like a couple of purple belts, guys like really good, like Sao Paulo State Champions, you know, third place world champion, you know. Uh, my, my first truck has a lot of blue belts and purple belts like champions, you know. But like with me, it was different because I was like every single day at the gym and he saw like I really wants to, to go to the next level. You know? And he just say, man, Let's go talk with Osvaldo Alves, you know, it, it was his first instructor, then he brought me there and then I started to to live at Osvaldo Alves uh, Academy and I started in training. Real? In real? Yeah, I lived at, at the, 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 the little exact, place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in the back in yeah. Copacabana? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I slept there. You guys should see what I'm talking about. I promise you guys, BJJ Library, when yeah. I go to Rio, I'm gonna take a picture of what, how, how, the kind of warrior we are talking about here. Yes, I remember and then, uh, you know, when I went to Rio, my... my pa uh, Fred Paixão was there too? Fred Paixão, yeah, was, yeah I, was, I was training with Fred Paixão every single day, you know, and uh, I remember my first instructor, he he talked to you too, and Shanji, you guys was training in uh, uh, Artur Mariano School. Heavy like dude. Muay Thai, yeah, yeah heavy and, dude. And uh, yeah. we talked there, we went there to visit, and you were training there. Uh, and then like uh, I started training there and then but I still like train with my coach, you know mm -hmm. back and forth And then like um, I went to, to TNA after that because uh, In the first in the first year with Osvaldo, I won my world title, you know I, I did my training camp as a there blue belt? as a blue belt. blue belt and and then like uh, Osvaldo He has like uh, another student in such that comes as well uh, With my coach and then my coach like they have the kind of like problems, you know and with the, with this guy and then like my coach say and I come back and let's like keep training here and let's figure out like what he can do you know and then we start training and then and then uh, after that he brought me to Tedede you know and I was like purple belt back then you know and then I which start, year was that 2003 2003 when yeah. they had just opened the TT TT exactly yeah, exactly. That is in Tedede. exactly and then from there we have my brown belt my black belt and then when do you got your black belt 2005 May, March, March 2005. My first tournament as a black belt was Pan Ams 2005. Who gave you the black belt? Uh, my first instructor, Kareka. Because Terere, he, he supposed to be Terere, but he had like the problems. Yeah, when, when Terere started to have uh, his problem, you were what? Brown belt? Brown belt. Because I remember that, that was... He gave me the brown belt. Terere yeah, gave, Terere gave you. And I remember that when one was to visit there, and everybody was kind of wonder what where people would train this and that because it was a very severe thing that happened yeah. to him. So then you got your black belt, mm -hmm. your sensei, mm -hmm. Terere was having some tough times. Yeah. Then what? And then like uh, I was there running the school, 
I was running the the, the, the thing for since I was brown belt yes. since 2005 end of 2005 2004 I was running the t t t t team, you know, the TT. So in the end of the day, you already born as a manager of the gym because your <laughs> first instructor, you go there to the start and end. Exactly. And then you get there in Sao Paulo, train t -t -t -t, then you, again, you manage the academy and doing everything again. Exactly, exactly. I helped t -t -t a lot, like cleaning and everything. And I was, I, I used to sleep at his house, you know, and uh, we used to like be very connected together every single day. and. Uh, and then like uh, I got my black belt and I was running the the Tereday school, and then in, for like one year I fought like all the wars. I won my first world title under Tereday, uh, like in 2005, and as a as a black belt. And then uh, uh, I I uh, in 2006, beginning of 2006, I fought the Brazilian nationals, and I started to feel like my my training going down because I was like running the class and teaching everything. I couldn't like. Train. If it's, if it was today, I could do that. But uh, back in them, I still learn. I still like need like the process. Need the process. Yeah. I still need the coach, you know, yeah. and everything. I I used to find a lot of experienced guys, you know, experience guys with a lot of experience. And then uh, I decide. Uh, I talk with Tere Day and I tell us. I say, guys, I, I I need to coach you guys. Not coach me anymore, you know. But Tere Day wasn't good, you know. But now today, thanks God, he's doing really good. And and. Uh, and then he said, okay, so you, you can do whatever you want. Do you, then, still, do you still have contact with him? Do you still talk with him? Yeah, like for my ADCC fight against Braulio, he, he did all the advice for my camp. Nice. <laughs> you nice. know? Nice. And uh, we're still talking every single time, uh, you know, before the fight. And when he knows I'm, I'm going to compete, he always talk to me, you know. And I forgot to say, like, in the pur as a purple belt and brown belt, I won the open weight and weight division from... From brown and purple belt, you know, in the words, with the under Tere Day as well, you know, and then, uh, and then in 2006 I moved to train with uh, Leo Vieira at the Brazza team because we used to train together. You know? So Leo used to train a few guys as well. Exactly, oh, okay. we used to train all together. Okay. Tere Day decide. Yeah, because to a open lot of people Tere Tere say team. a lot of things, but nobody yeah. kind of. We never had yeah. like a, okay. Yeah, no yeah, Tere Day. Tere Day when uh, when he opened the Tere Tere team. Yes. Uh, there was there there was the the headquarter of uh, Brazza, of the, the the not Brazza but it was a uh, master. So they, they just like, left like today. When they just left the headquarters San Diego, exactly. the main academy that everybody. Exactly, is. exactly. Okay. It was when exactly when okay. he, when the when the, they left the alliance. You know they have the problems with the alliance. Remember and then they left and they opened like this and they stay yeah. under Chakra. But Chakra was alliance as well. Was like a little confused. Uh -huh. You know. So you went with Lozinho. And then I started training with Leozinho after that, and then, uh, and then... Where, where was that? In Sao Paulo. In Sao Paulo, okay. Sao Paulo. Okay. And then I, I, I had a place to teach as well. I used to teach in São Caetano. I used to live in São Caetano do Sul. And then um, we, we, you know, we, we train, we train, and then Leo decided to open the check mat. And then we decided to open the check mat. Um, we had, like, a lot of... Uh, uh, things going on inside the team, you know, like people didn't know where they go, where they should a stay lot, or not. Like you know? today, we are business yeah. people, a lot yeah. of business decisions exactly. should be made. Huh? Exactly, exactly. Like, you know, and then, uh, you know, and back then, like me and Ramon, we joined the, the, the Elvira team together. Yeah, you know? uh, Ramon uh, is the founder of Atos. And co right. yeah, co-founders together with me, me and Ramon. We opened oh, up so you, okay. So, so when where when, where when Ramon gets to the picture, Ramon he, tra he trains together. If you yeah, guess. when I was when I was uh, as soon as I, bef uh, right before I got my black belt. Yeah, Ramon joined the Tere team. He oh, used to be part of okay. Tere team oh, as well. Okay. I you see. know, like all oh, Rafael and Guilherme used to be blue belt back then. From you know? from Ramon. And from Ramon, yeah. and then Ramon joined Tere. -Tere. Then I'm enjoying today, and okay. then when I when okay. I when I when I, did, okay. when I talk uh, with Tere, yeah, we went to Brazza, to Brazza, no, to Leo Vieira, you know, which was Brazza, yes. And then Leo Vieira decided to open the check mat, and then he opened the check mat, uh, because uh, me and Ramon we had a lot of students, yeah. And then we say, no, you know what, like let's let's open out this open team, our you know? own business, exactly. And then we which stay. year was that? 2008. So Atos was born in 2008. 2008, yes. And that's the year that you decide come here? No, no. I, did, I came to the United States uh, in 2010. 
Yeah, 2010. What you guys might know, uh, don't know, and uh, I was witness of that. Yeah. Andrea has a has a tough start, you know, and I remember when uh, his wife Angelica yeah. broke the arm. That was had, 2005. Yeah, yeah, you guys just coming here for the first time. Or was the yeah, first yeah, time? First time Angelica was here. Yeah, and then he's just dealing with so much stress and pain and things. And man, this is gonna work. This is not gonna work. And then when the house burned. Yes, exactly. The same year. Same year, yeah. 2005 as well. 2005, yeah. So I was alone, training, <laughs> yeah. teaching, and uh, without my coach. Yes. <laughs> you know, and all, I, met, I I lost everything I had here in the United States. You know, I have a... Like, I have so a, it was a lot, a, yeah. lot, a lot of... Uh, you got to have a lot of faith, because when yeah. you start like that, you kind of, <laughs> oh my God. Exactly, yeah. yeah. My wife broke the arm. Yeah. And, I remember know. was... Yeah. Man, this kid... This kid's future is greatness because he's putting off a lot yeah. of stress right now. Yeah. And then when was the time that you decided, well, I'm going to go to America? Yeah, like uh, I started training uh, in Rio for MMA because uh, when I won the awards in 2008, yeah. we opened the Atos team here, Ramon. 2008. Then, exactly. Yeah. And then like, but I had all my plans to, to fight MMA. And then uh, Ramon was taking care of Atos and I was like doing like the... The training, the, the training for MMA, and I moved to Rio, de Janeiro, and started training with Tino Nogueira. You know, I was training with Anderson Silva, Rodrigo Minotaur, all these guys during like two years. And then um, I was I was world champion everything, and then I was invest so much in my MMA career. I made like seven fights, but I wasn't like in a not good time for me, like uh, financially. You know, like I, I had a daughter, I was married. And it, I passed through a lot of problems in life, you know. I couldn't pay my bills and all these things. And Anderson Silva came to me and said, man, you should go to the United States. You should move to the United States. I said, man, like, no, like, how I would move there? I can't. And then I had the opportunity to, uh, to have my gym here, you know, uh, to open the gym here. And um, our friend, like, you know him, like Mark, yeah, you know, uh, he owns the place. And then he said, man, this is the place, like, you can teach here, do whatever you want. I said, okay. And then I start training and start teaching here. I just came. I didn't make any marketing. Like I didn't like uh, put on blogs, like, oh, I open, like grand open or whatever. I just move and start, like right after my fight against Macaco, I moved. And then I start like in this place only, you know, the gym was really small. And I start like teaching and training, you know, and people start to come and come and come. I start to like doing my work. And and then in 2011, I won the ADCC titles, you know, I weight in absolute. And then when my name came back to Jiu-Jitsu gallery again, you know, boom, it exploded again. And then like, I start to get a, be recognized again. And I had to disagree to, with you, you know? on that one. Your <laughs> name is already big for almost a decade. We all appreciate your work, thank your you. job, and everything that comes together. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, and then like, uh, we, uh, we work hard, you know, and then, Today, Atos is a very strong team, you know. Uh, we got a couple of podiums in the world, you know, and, but our, our goal is to be the first place uh, as a world title, you know, team. You know, we're working really hard for that, and I believe, like, one day you can do that, you know. I believe that yeah. next year you guys are already going to go. Yeah. There, this know, year we lost uh, by two points. Yeah. <laughs> because of you. <laughs> you haven't been believe it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I remember when you came here to San Diego, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw a lot of your training. I saw a lot of your moody days yeah. <laughs> for training for MMA. Yeah. So what happened? It was like a, a hot girl that you date for a little bit, and you say, "No, this is not for me." MMA? Yeah. Ah, uh, no, like, uh, yeah, it's like I really like MMA. That's what people always ask. Oh, why he stopped? Yeah, why yeah, this, why I know, that? I know. I always tell this a hot girl that you say, "No, it's not for me." I know, I know, I know. No, 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 it's not like. It's like I really enjoy MMA. I really like MMA. Like when I have when I have like t teammates like training for MMA, I like to help them. I like to do. But the thing is, I have my business now. I have my school, and I need to take care of my school. So if I want to come back to MMA, I need to le leave everyone. I need to to leave my students and everything just to like take care of my myself, you know. And then I can't do that anymore, you know. And I believe jujitsu is my future, you know. And my school is my future, my association is my future, so I'm investing right now on that because I know MMA is something like I can do, 
I can win or I can lose. I can make like uh, money and be famous, but it's not gonna be something forever, you know. But uh, I believe jujitsu is forever. I can do jujitsu until my 100 years old, you know. So I, I, I investing a lot on on jujitsu right now. That's why I'm not doing MMA. So the MMA project was done. Ato San Diego was in peak. It's one of your projects. And then you came up with the trend now of the online mm -hmm. uh, instruction. What yeah. was your idea when you built the project and how it goes right now? Yeah, uh, I built like the Algo Val and uh, we we built this to show everything about Andre Galval, you know. That's why the name Al Galval, you know. So uh, we talk about lifestyle, diet, you know, drills, jiu-jitsu, sparring, you know, everything. And uh, uh, the website is doing good, you know. So we, we have like a couple hundred members, you know, in the website. And of course, like we need to market more like and to get like this like better. And I'm working really hard right now to rebuild the website. I want to do the website like uh, uh, like with more positions, you know, with more about uh, lifestyle. And uh, I'm bringing like the Algavon uh, Center to San Diego because it used to be like in, in Knoxville. But now we move into San Diego and now we're going to like start like in the progress like really strong again. And also we're going to start like uh, with a lot of uh, technique, uh, diet, like sparring, you know, all you guys need, you know. So and uh, uh, that's that's like the, the main goal, you know, like to show everyone like uh, the best of Andre Galvão. Yeah. And uh, some of our subscribers ask you to ask you this: Is Andre the same when there is a camera for sparring, or did it change? <laughs> <laughs> because you know we are a few friends, but yeah. then here the guy come, oh, this is sparring is gonna be yeah. in the whole line. Yeah, yeah. Did that change a little bit? Because yeah. for me, it changes. Yeah, you know? yeah, I can't. Yeah. If you want to film, you go put yeah. a secret in camera. Exactly. Because then it's world yeah. championship. Yeah, you know, like Jiu Jitsu, uh, like not Jiu Jitsu, but every single sport, like when you do sport, like uh, martial arts or, or Jiu Jitsu or soccer or whatever you're doing to be the best, you know, uh, you got to like show the best, you know. And uh, when you have a camera, like, of course, like the, the sparring, like more intense. You know, like both sides, and and if you if you just like uh, chill and let the guy do whatever you want, like you, it's not it's not you, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, like change, you know. Let's say I go visit Rafael Guilherme, they have the Mendes Bros there, the online train, uh -huh. and like they have the camera like there in our face. Like I'm like, man, my my mood is gonna change, you know. You guys know, like ah oh, yeah, yeah, you know. So and we don't have like much sparring together, you know. But that's why because it changed, you know, change everything and. And when you are a champion, you have a little bit of ego, you know, because if you don't have that, you can't be champion, you know, you yeah. cannot accept to lose, you know, I, I'm like that, you know, a lot of people are like, no, you know, you need to learn how to lose and, no, but if you want to be the best, you know, you know, you learn something, a good lesson to be champion again, you know, so that's like, that's, that's how it happens. And of course, like if you have the camera there in your face, things change, you know. So talking about that. Who are the three guys that impress you the most that you either train or compete? Lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight. What are the Light top way, three you way. say? Like, yeah. can be training yeah. and can be... Yeah, like, you know, I... Who like, is the best lightweight that you ever trained? Rafael. Rafael, for, for sure, sure, for sure. Yeah, for me, Rafael uh -huh. is a is a phenom. Uh, he's a... He changed Jiu Jitsu, you, you know, he changed a little bit, like all this. A lot of leverage. Yeah, exactly, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and uh, he's so smart and, you know, um, and um, that's why he, he he's so young, but he won a lot of titles, like which me and you and Shanji already had with all our career, you know, like in short time, he makes like uh, his name, you know, so he's a, he's a very, very good, you know, Rafael is a lightweight. So middleweight, you know, did it, you know, no, no. Train? for sure. Like uh, I never train, I never see anyone fighting in in the in the, in the four lines. You know, like the mat area, like today. So no one ever did like the way he used to do. You know, like uh, like the way he fights, the way he, he interacts with the public, the way he 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 play guard, the way he like play on top, the way he teaches. 
you know, so everything. So Terere for me is a guy which is like, uh, you know, but of course I, I trained Jiu Jitsu for like, uh, my, I'm black belt since 2005. So it's already 10 years, almost black belt. And I, I have a lot of guys like to give names here, like, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we have like Leandro Law, which is a brand new guy right now. We have Marcel Garcia, which is like a phenom as well as a, as a middleweight, you know. So we have like uh, so many names and... What about heavyweight? Know, heavyweight, man. Heavy guys. Heavy guys, like uh, I really like... Because uh, nowadays everybody say Bushesha because yeah. maybe he is the... Yeah, Bushesha, you know, like he's big, he's fast, you know, and everything. I fought him before, you know, uh, a couple of times and uh, he's really strong and man, he's like impressive because the speed he has. And of course, he's a champ right now, but Roger Grace was very impressive as well. Ten yeah. world titles in, in only in black belt. Yeah, and incredible. plus like four or five uh, silver medals on the open class. It's crazy, you know, and uh, he's really, really good, you know. And also we have like different eras, you know. We have different yeah. eras. We have yeah. Pajipan, we have you, like Saulo. I remember when I was like blue belt, I used to watch you there. You know, we have like so many good guys, you know. And Not that I'm that much older than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, like for me, I like to talk about, let's say, if you talk about my teammates, I'll have like a couple guys. If you talk about my, about jiu-jitsu community, I'll have a couple guys. Of your know? teammates, who, who, who is the one? I heard that Gutu Campos is. That's what he has my mind. In, you, in tournament, he's kind yeah. of go a little Guto, lower of his possibilities. Yeah, Gutu is impressive. But I heard for no. many different sources, not only no. you, that... Yeah. I'd like to train with him. Yeah, yeah Guto, he, seems to be he has, you know, he has the old school, new school style at the same time. And he's so intelligent. And he's like uh, a lot, like very strong. And, and he's a lot producing of a lot of champions. He's, he's a very he a great champion. I heard champ. his academy in his living room. Exactly. Is that true? <laughs> exactly, yeah, it's his house. It's the basement. Uh, yeah, that's it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. And uh, Guto, from my teammates, is amazing, you know. Also, Ramon Lemos is a pretty insane uh, jiu-jitsu fighter, you know. Ramon Lemos is a guy which is, like, man, impressive, you know, and, and uh, fast. Talk about, talk about uh, Ramon. We saw him very active in the beginning, like coach and mm -hmm, everything. Mm -hmm. Then he had to get MMA. his time in the MMA and did. Where Ramon Lemos fit now uh, in the Atos? Mm -hmm. Is he your sensei? Is mm -hmm. he your business part mm -hmm. where where he, yeah, or Ramon, is he you in charge of the Ramon is the co-founder co-founder of Atos Jiu Jitsu and uh, we always talk back and forth you know uh, when I do the camps here uh, we talk we set up the plans we set up the camps Ramon is like a coach you know mm -hmm. and he's a coach of everyone and if you see like all these guys like you know Black Belts as uh, Guilherme Rafael Mendes Durinho all these Great guys, even Guto like train a little bit Ramon under Ramon, you know, and, and uh, he's a great coach, you know, and we always in, in touch like to talk about like the training, the, the way we set up the training, you know, but also uh, Ramon is a partner, you know, of the team, you know, he's in charge of like uh, the team in Brazil, you know, so Ramon is taking care of Atos Jiu Jitsu in Brazil, so right now he's there taking care of everything, and uh, he's uh, and I'm in charge here in the United States, you know. Okay. And uh, he's uh, my, my partner, you know, Ramon is my partner. Okay, yeah. perfect. And uh, you talk about this year, 10 years of black belt, mm -hmm. all your different instructors that influence your game. Yeah. But today, who advise Andre Gavon? Who you would consider your sensei? <laughs> or you are Ronnie? <laughs> yeah. Same right without a master. You know, like I always, I, I still in touch sometimes with my, my first instructor, Careca. He helped me. He, he gave me tips sometimes. Uh, also, Terere, I talk to him a lot, you know, and uh, he always helped me. Even though, like, he's like training on the Alliance right now, but he still like helped me. And uh, I, I have Ramon who helped me a lot too. You know, Ramon, like, I, he's a guy who's like always talk to me and help me as well. But uh, daily, you know, I need to, I learn with my students, you know, I learn with them. And sometimes I say, JT, teach a position here today, teach you like something for us. I want you to teach us, you know, and then I learn with him. And then we have Keen as well. We have uh, 
the era, all these guys, you know, like I, I, I learned with those guys, you know, they're from the new school. And I still find it, so I need to improve my game, you know. And I try to keep my mind open to learn, you know, and, and I learn like watching fights, you know. But pretty much solo, I'm 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 a runny, you know, sorry. <laughs> pretty much I'm like I'm like it's hard, you know. Sometimes I'm I wanna, too right now. Yeah. That's why I'm asking you. I am yeah. too. Sometimes I, I I go and try to take advice with the. It's like guys the with, circle is exactly. closed, and you kind of. Okay. But now you know. But now like uh, I'm more comfortable with that right now than like five five a uh, couple years ago. You know. Yeah, because now you know how to deal with. You're exactly. More mature. Exactly. You're comfortable of you. Yeah. Where, who you are, mm -hmm. where you are. Like for my camps, go. I always put someone to run yeah. the camp. Yep. You know, sometimes like brown belts run my camp. Yeah. My last ADCC train, trust, the last ADCC trust. train was a purple belt running the camp, you know. <laughs> and uh, that's how I do. You know, I learn with my students. Talk about that, man. Great, unbelievable performance. ADCC was like it. Andre at his best, at his yeah. top, was so fluid. You, Looks like uh, your recovery was amazing. A lot of people, oh, he's in juice, he's in that. Mm -hmm. But what I saw was a gift athlete in his best and with the mind very clear mm -hmm. of who you are, yeah. where you want to be, and what you want, you know? Mm -hmm. It's kind of the father that got his family and know that which place he has in life and kind mm -hmm. of a feeling, feeling very blessed. And that's mm -hmm. what you show in all your fights. How is it going to be next year? What kind of Andre? <laughs> because it's already two years, yeah. single man, exactly. go there, yeah. our good friend, yeah. cyborg on the other side. Yeah. What kind of Andre? Like, you, you know, expect that. Yeah, the, Andre is, uh, the Andre will be like better, you know, <laughs> I work to do the best. What, you know? what do you think you can get better? I can get because like... Because for me, mm -hmm. I was pretty impressed yeah. how you handle Take downs, foot logs, adversity, sleep, everything was pretty sharp. Yeah. What do you think you need to improve I still, if that is anything? Yeah, like I think, I think I, I have a lot to improve my wrestling still. You know, I have a lot to improve my, my jiu-jitsu, you know, uh, my, you know, like I'll be like a little, like, but, uh, you know, I'm improving the way of like experience, I think, you know, um, I already won a couple of ADCC titles. I did the super fight. I know the feeling. I know how to do the preparation and all for this, and which is like for my opponent is like something really new for him, you know? And also like I have a lot of respect of uh, Cyborg, you know? I'm not gonna underestimate him ever, you know? I'll be ready for the best, you know? And I'll train hard and uh, with God willing, like I'm not gonna have any injury. I'll be there like 100% like I was in the last time. And I'll do my best, you know? So I, we always have something to improve, you know? Always, always. And uh, I wanna improve with the help of my, my team, you know? So all my students, uh, all people who's around me, you know? Uh, my wife, you know? Uh, maybe I can do like something better on my diet as well. You know, and, and get there like in the best shape of my life again and, and do my best and win, you know. And it's gonna be my hometown, <laughs> my house. Yeah. Be ready for a very humid and very hot. I know, I know. I'm thinking about <laughs> environment. to go there. Environment. And yeah. uh, going there, you already invite. We're gonna have a very uh -huh. special camp over there. Yeah. And it would be an honor to have Andre over there. Yeah. Breathing yeah. the R of the Amazon. Yeah. And understand where we came from. Exactly, exactly. BJJ Library, thank you so much for being tuned with us here with Andre, great father, thank great champ, so. great instructor. Learn new cool things. You guys are gonna be stoked what we have come for. And uh, if you wanna come to one of the best camps in San Diego, Atos headquarters, and you're gonna see some good <laughs> things going on right here. Thank you guys, humbling experience. God bless you all. Thank you guys. Take care. <laughs>
valeu pela valeu, tá energia. Valeu. Só aí, Valeu, galera. Obrigado aí. Valeu, Saulão. Obrigado. Um grande abraço a todos aí.